What is up, fellow nerds, and welcome to Not Your Status Quo with our ongoing series of What's Next for the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Let's jump right in. I think the first thing that we really need to talk about today is, you know, the way Sam was acting when he opened up the box from the Wakandans. Oh, what's in the box? The look on his face, it looked like he was kind of psyching himself up to take on that mantle of Captain America. I do think that last request that Bucky had for the Wakandans. I may have another favor to ask of you. Was to make Sam a Captain America outfit. And that really handles two things here. It gives Sam his Captain America uniform, probably made out of vibranium since he isn't a super soldier and may need some augmentation to kind of help fight some of these people. But it also keeps his other set of wings with Joaquin, who we know in the comics became the all new Falcon. So this could be handling two things, but I'm really looking forward. I think we are going to see Sam Wilson, Captain America in New York, fighting the Flag Smashers with what's about to go down at the GRC. We're gonna make sure the GRC vote never happens. So Keith brought up that Bucky talked to the Wakandans and I just wanna point out something that Dave brought up in our last What's Next, as weird as that sounds. He mentioned that Bucky may have lost some of his uh, some of his sway with the Wakandans. We noticed that they didn't refer to him as White Wolf during that entire confrontation, and they finally did once he made things right. And we'll get into that maybe a little bit more later on in this video. But they he made things right with them, and once again they referred to him as White Wolf. It would be prudent to make yourself scarce in Wakanda for the time being, White Wolf. So maybe Dave was onto something when he mentioned that maybe he has a little bit of pull within Wakanda. Yeah, and after they, you know, called him the White Wolf and they sent Zemo away, they said they're going to take Zemo to the raft. And I think, boom, that's where Zemo is going to meet his team. He's going to meet other people locked up in the raft, convince them to help him, and they're going to get out somehow. That's my what's next for Zemo. I had the exact same thought, Dave. He wanted to go to the raft. Zemo is always in control of every situation, it seems like. And he knew, one, Bucky wasn't going to kill him, and two, that the Wakandans were going to take him to the raft. And that is exactly where he wants to be. Now, I don't think we're gonna see that played out in the sixth episode of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, but we are going to see that played out in either Disney Plus or a movie coming down the line here. And I think that is step one of the Thunderbolts. Sound reasoning. A few things about this show that I wanted to comment on is that Walker, you know, it picks up right where the last show left off and they, they meet him in that warehouse. And, it, you know, it's very reminiscent of that scene in um, Civil War where the two powered beings are fighting a non-powered being or human or whatever you want to call them. <laughs> anyway, so Walker thinks that he's so bad that when um, they say, all right, give me the shield, He's like, you don't want to do this. He's so bad that he's going to beat Bucky with the metal arm, and he's already been uh, a super soldier for 100 years. Uh, I don't think he fully grasped what was going on there. He was just pure adrenaline. And actually, that got under my skin a little bit. So, Wyatt Russell, nice job. And the Oscar goes to Walker. He goes to Lamar's parents and his sister. I think that's his sister. And he says to them, you know, he wouldn't let the person who murdered their son get away and that's why he killed that guy but to me it seems like he did them he dishonored lamar a little bit by lying about who killed him he knows he was in the room when um carly killed him and you know carly looked shocked like she really didn't know she could do that and it doesn't make any any le any better but the fact that he lied about the reason he killed him it was just a pure general rush and he didn't kill the right person I think that dishonored Lamar's memory a little bit. What do you think, Keith? Dave, you are absolutely spot on. You know, he did he did a disservice to Lamar's memory. He thought he was sparing them. And if you remember from Civil War, when Captain America sends that letter to Iron Man at the end, and he says, I thought I was doing you a service by not telling you, but really I was doing a service to myself by not telling you. He was making it easier on himself. John Walker was doing the exact same thing. So they're kind of drawing parallels to Captain America there, but I don't think John Walker is going to learn his lesson like Steve Rogers did. Uh, probably not. And while we're on the subject of John Walker, when we got that secret cameo this week, 
with Julia Louise Dreyfus, I started thinking, okay, she is putting a team together, it sounds like, whether it's Leviathan or a Rehydra or a thing. I think we might be seeing two different teams coming into play here. I think what we talked about earlier with Zemo putting together the Thunderbolts and going to the raft to recruit, but I think we might see Contessa or Val putting together a Dark Avengers type team. And she wants John Walker to be the leader, to be, you know, she knows, I think she can control him. And I think she knows of his sort of dark tendencies. She even said, hey, I would have killed the SOB too. So I think that's where we're heading. We're gonna get a Dark Avengers team and we're probably gonna get a Thunderbolts team based on what we saw this week. That brings me to what I think is next in the series or possibly in future movies or in other TV series. We'll kind of have to see how this final episode plays out to see where they're really going to go with it all and what's next for the future. But as far as Contessa or Val or whatever it is that we want to call her or not call her, depending on what her mood is and what her preference is. Just call me Val, but don't call me Val. Just keep it in your head. I have a feeling and this is just a theory that I'm you know, throwing out there. We'll kind of see how it goes. But I have a feeling that they're going to actually introduce the Secret Empire storyline. And I think that they're going to jump ahead. And instead of Vel being an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., I think she's going to be either an agent of Leviathan or a Russian agent or something like that. Maybe she'll be at this point in time working with Hydra. And if anybody knows what the Secret Empire storyline is, originally it was Steve Rogers was a sleeper agent of Hydra. And I kind of think what they're going to do as far as the MCU is concerned, since Steve is kind of out of the picture or, well, we'll talk about uh, that in just a minute. But since Steve isn't really a part of this right now, I think what they're going to be doing is they're going to introduce John Walker uh, not so much as U.S. agent, but maybe instead as John Walker, agent of Hydra, or John Walker, agent of Leviathan, or something like that. That's what I think is what's next for him and for Bell. I like that, Doug, and it makes me think, like, if she's got connections like we think she does, we saw John Walker making a new shield at the end and putting his uh, medals of honor on that shield. Now... Wakandans are the only ones who have the vibranium, right? So what's he making that shield out of? Is it aluminum? Is it is it recycled uh, cans and crap? No, she might have the connections in, to get him the vibranium in order to make that shield. Now, Dave, I don't know if it's quite vibranium yet because he was able to kind of shape it and mold it and do that things together because we saw in the clip that we got with two episodes left, he throws that shield at Carly and she just kicks it aside. So I think it's gonna be exposed that this is just sort of some homemade shield that he made at home. But that is going to be seen and I think Contessa may come and bring him a new shield after this fight. It could be a post credit scene or we may see that in a future season or a movie coming down the line. And the act that they are going to take a vote on that Carly wants to stop is called the Patch Act. Now, in the comics, in Madripoor, Wolverine is referred to as Patch. I wonder if this is a reference to Wolverine in any way. Obviously, it's not going to be uh, a law named after Wolverine because he's not even in there yet, but a subtle reference nonetheless. And it would make sense. We did see the Princess Bar where Patch hung out in, in Madripoor earlier on in the season. So, you know, a couple references to Wolverine. We know he's coming. Can't wait to see him. I definitely think you're right, Dave. I think this was kind of a subtle nod towards Logan being in Madripoor in the comics. Hmm, I'm intrigued. I also want to talk about Sam Wilson's first mission as Captain America, which we should see in Episode 6 of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. There is a parallel in the comics, Sam Wilson, Captain America number 14, where Sam is trying to stop the Flag Smashers, and because he isn't as gifted with the shield yet as Steve Rogers was, a senator is killed. And in the comics, it's all part of Steve Rogers' plan at the time, who wants the shield back because he's secretly, you know, working for Hydra because of the Cosmic Cube and all that stuff. But I think they're going to use it in the Falcon and the Winter Soldier in the MCU to just have a few more doubts about himself. I think he's going to go out, he's going to save the day, but he's going to have that one failing and it's going to linger in his mind. And I think people are going to help him see that that wasn't his fault 
And, you know, we're always getting better. And I think it's going to be an excellent story point leading on for the future of Sam Wilson, Captain America. I really think you're onto something. And I would love to see something like that play out in the show, Keith, because what I've been noticing is throughout this series, they've been going over basically failures and choices that have been made. That's kind of been an ongoing theme in this series. Somebody has made a choice and maybe it didn't work out. Maybe it wasn't the right choice. Sam decides in the beginning that he's going to give up the shield. He thinks it's going to go into the museum and it turns out it's given to John Walker. Choices and failures, but everything leads to this learning lesson. And what I think this is going to end up leading to, and uh, this, I don't know if this needs to be reeled in. We'll have to see how Dave feels about it. But I think what this is going to lead to is maybe an appearance at the end of this series by Nick Fury. Maybe all along he was trying to sort of nudge people in a certain direction. I think perhaps he was trying to get Sam to take on the mantle of Captain America by having somebody gift him the shield. But was that really old man Steve Rogers? Or was it someone a little greener? I am not going to reel that in. That is a beautiful theory. I love it. Tony Stark said it himself when he said, uh, Nick Fury is the spy of all spies. So for him to have lies upon lies, he probably did set this all up. Not only is that an excellent theory, Doug, but it also kind of clears up that plot hole from Endgame when how did Steve Rogers get back to that timeline to gift Sam the shield? Him, Nick Fury using Steve Rogers or a scroll posing as Steve Rogers to get his way is Nick Fury to a T. While we're speaking of Nick Fury, Sharon Carter. I've theorized on this before that I think she's working for Nick Fury. What if we go the Doug route and that's not actually Sharon Carter, but a scroll posing as Sharon Carter in service of Nick Fury as the power broker because Nick Fury wants what everybody else wants. He wants that super soldier serum so he can create his own secret warriors because he knows that there's a bad set of scrolls infiltrating Earth as we speak. That's what we think is coming up on the Falcon and the Winter Soldier and further in the MCU. But what do you guys think? Leave it in the comments below and we'll see you next time on Not Your Status Quo.